Well, welcome back to the Speaking Llama Survivor podcast. Today, we have the latest castaway voted out of the Villains Tribe. We've got Fraser on the podcast today. Fraser, how are you this morning? Ooh, thanks for having me, guys. No, I'm, uh, <laughs> you know what? Surprisingly, I feel very fresh and uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really good. Good. Yeah, that was a <laughs> wild episode, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> And unfortunately, Crazy. it seems like, right, you, it seems like sometimes in Survivor, it's like a, a roulette board and it kind of depends on where it falls and stops and it happened to fall on your number. And I, we, I'm sure you get asked, have gotten asked a lot about this today, but we want to start off with what, how did you prepare going into Survivor? Mm. Look, you know, and, and honestly watching last night back it was like a weight was lifted from my shoulders mm. it was this it was this secret that i was holding and couldn't talk about and couldn't tell anyone about of how i left and when i left etc so to now be able to talk about it and have this forum with you guys you know absolute sort of veterans of knowing survivor in and out mm. is awesome so you know appreciate yeah. that opportunity but look in the beginning before even going to the show i had probably one of the shortest turnaround times for actually okay. um, being made aware that I was a person of interest and then actually going on. It was about a month. Wow. Cool. So it all happened really quickly. But when the survivor gods shine upon you and say, Fraser, we want <laughs> you, you kind of go, when, let's go. Yeah. I love that. Well, hey, and being a, a heroes versus villain season, we had – about half returners, half new players like yourself. Mm. Um, looking at the returners that first day, were there any that you were really excited to potentially work with or maybe some that you were intimidated mm. to uh, potentially rub shoulders with? Look, it's funny. I uh, I was an early Survivor fan. So I watched those mm. early seasons and particular favorite of mine for Australian Survivor was season four when we first mm. saw David's uh, when we first saw David come onto the scene, you know, and that was such an amazing uh, year for the show, especially in Survivor history with David and his fake idol. So mm -hmm. I only really remember some of the older players who played like Shawnee. Mm -hmm. I haven't, unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to watch and sort of review and binge the most recent seasons with Simon, mm -hmm. Geordie and George, yeah. who are all very new to the franchise, right? Mm -hmm. So blessing or a curse, I didn't have the chance to sort of have the back history on each of these individuals game hmm. and how they played, which look, could be a good thing. It could be a really bad thing mm -hmm. at the same time. Like the positive there is you don't come in with prior expectations that cloud your judgment on who you can work with or who you can't. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if people are up to their old tricks, you don't know about it. <laughs> so for it's sure. this double-edged sword that can work for you and work against you. And I think as you'll see through a lot of the sort of Survivor fans, I've said that Geordie played a really different game mm -hmm. and Simon played a slightly different game as well. Mm -hmm. They both learned a lot from their last experience. And I think that's shown through. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you could go back and have watched all the seasons with that, have changed how you played this game? I, I'd i like to think it would, but at the same time, as soon as you get dropped there, day one on the beach, everything you thought about becomes real. And watching it versus playing it mm. are two very different things. Mm -hmm. The anxiety and the stress and nervousness of being in that you know ridiculous environment is so crazy and hectic that... I don't think anything can prepare you for it. No. The mind game of, you know, watching people's private conversations on TV and seeing what people are saying behind your back is one thing. But when you're there and, and I know that people were lying to my face because I was lying right to others, <laughs> right back. You, you start, you start to really worry that like, oh my God, is everything I know about this completely fake? Can I trust anyone? And you can spiral if you don't, you know, take care of yourself and sort of watch that. Mm -hmm. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and I love that you watch. Plans, plans go out the window very early. Very <laughs> oh, <I bet>. early. 
I bet. Well, I love that you watched season four. That's that's one of my favorite seasons as well. And David's my favorite player. So I think that's all you need to see, if you ask me, <laughs> in terms of preparing. Um, yeah. Well, what one thing we've noticed too, you know, this this early part of the season with the villains tribe, we see a lot of new players get voted out uh, back to back to back. Uh, what do you make of that out there? Is that something that was discussed? Uh, as you were deliberating, or it, was there any talk of uh, an all newbie alliance against the returners? What what was that experience? Not at all. I think look, day one, the returning players, there was probably an idea that they were working together. Yeah, but I think that dissipated quickly. I think mm -hmm. people realize that just because we're returning doesn't mean we get along. Doesn't yeah. mean our visions are aligned doesn't mean that we like and as much as you try and leave it at the door you do have to have common ground mm -hmm. to really get along with people in such an intense and confined environment mm -hmm. and i think that that idea went out the window and, and look the idea of returnees versus newbies it really wasn't a thing and although there were more new players voted out in the early days it really came down to how they individually played the game Oh. how they assisted others in their own personal game moving mm -hmm. forward. And mm -hmm. I think some of those players either rightly or wrongly, uh, you know, either didn't say the right thing, said the wrong thing, were too aggressive with how they said it, whatever it mm -hmm. might be, the, mo the yeah. smallest nuances can be the nail in your coffin in Survivor. And, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, they went home. Um, yeah. Mimi and, and Michael and Angelie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, we did not get to see enough of you personally. I, I enjoyed what we did get to see. But... I agree that I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but what was your strategy, kind of go at, going on to the island, and or what did what changed while you were there? Mm. Look, the one thing that is very clear, with the exception of George, is the more outrageous you are, the more of a target you paint yourself, mm. and saying literally one wrong sentence or word or responding to a question incorrectly can seal your fate wow. and we saw that with the vote for mimi right mm -hmm. we went into that vote with a very clear opinion and a consensus amongst the tribe that stevie was going home mm -hmm. and it really sealed her fate in maybe not even just a lack of response to questions about the cookie jar she didn't yeah. even find anything in the cookie jar <laughs> but just the unwillingness to sort of respond or be mm -hmm. as honest or forthcoming about it was the reason that the vote flipped then yeah. and there unanimously right so i came in with a very clear plan do not stand out don't be a pink <laughs> flamingo don't be a peacock stay in your lane get along and look me physically i'm five seven i'm 62 kilos right i'm small i'm slight i'm fast but in those early challenges, they were so strength-based, so physical, yeah. uh, you know, that I knew that that wouldn't be my strong suit. I knew that that wouldn't be the asset that I bring my tribe. So my, you know, what I'm bringing to my game has to be, has to be more than that, has to be friendship, has to be mm -hmm. trust, has to be mateship, has to be, uh, you, you know, uh, so much deeper than that. And my very, very single-minded focus goal was to play smart, be quiet mm -hmm. don't uh you know don't be crazy and outrageous and dramatic just slide by because i knew that if i could get myself to merge i'd be in a very strong position mm -hmm. and it's actually very interesting after last night's tribal you know i had messages from some of the players who i played with you know and sean in particular sent me a really lovely message to say you know what i think you were in the perfect position and had mm -hmm. things not gone the way that they did you would have made it much further in the game mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I, I always think you know being uh someone who's consistent who is calm who has that mateship perspective uh mm -hmm. is a really great asset to a tribe and i think mm -hmm. typically that would be despite the the uh theatrics that happened at the tribal <laughs> uh last night um which which is something i want to ask about you know you and jordy mm -hmm. voted for stevie uh, in that yeah. and kind of flip from that alliance with CV and Simon. So what, what was your thought process in doing that? At what point in, in the day or the night, did you <laughs> make that choice uh, to align mm. with uh, George? 
Well, it was it was after we came back from the challenge where we got dominated uh, by the heroes. <laughs> surprisingly we came back from the challenge <laughs> and pretty much immediately look simon you know hatched his plan that he wanted to take down george and pretty much straight away as soon as we gave him the yep all clear we're on board geordie and i went aside and went absolutely not wow it's time for a change this mm. is getting predictable we got to think about the long game tribe swap is imminent and we need mm. to be prepared for that we strapped ourselves to simon who we felt was losing the trust or respect or mm -hmm. uh, from the, from our other tribe mates that it could be potentially a sinking ship. And we didn't feel that he could add to our games moving forward, that we needed to align ourselves in a stronger majority with people mm -hmm. that we felt were going further in the game potentially. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that wasn't an easy decision. I was definitely, but my closest ally was Geordie, right? Mm -hmm. We were inseparable and, so much love for the guy. He is an awesome dude. But <laughs> I did get along with Simon really well. It wasn't an easy decision to go, yep, cool, Simon's out. But it felt like the best strategic decision at the time, yeah. pre-tribal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what, was there, was there, so we're at tribal and JLP comes out and says, you know what? We're having a challenge right now. Simon wins. Was there ever any thought of flipping back to Simon? given that he was no longer eligible to be voted out? I I had a really strong gut feeling that George had an idol. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I felt that regardless, you know, and George, and Simon was so headstrong on George, 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 that yeah. nothing else was come, like would enter his brain, right? Mm. That, And I felt that George wasn't an option just purely because he played an idol and someone else cops a stray vote and goes home. That's how I felt. That's exactly what I was thinking could happen. And that could be my downfall, right? So I felt that I felt that we'd made this plan and we needed to stick to it. We needed mm -hmm. to see it through. And we had to tell Simon, keep him happy. Yep, yep, we're voting George, no problem. Mm -hmm. Jordy and I had a little whisper, which you didn't see, um, and said, no, no, yep, Stevie, plan's still on, let's go. Because we had we had trust in the girls that, that mm -hmm. we were all together. We were strong. We weren't Spice Girls, but we were we were aligned, you know. <laughs> yeah. Honorary Spice Girl, right? right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Backup dancers, singers, there, there it whatever is. you yeah. want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, one of my last questions for you, you know, about that tribal council, uh, when Caleb and I were watching it today, when mm -hmm. we saw uh, George, you know, really push Simon to play your idol for Stevie, and then we'll reset. Mm -hmm. uh, and Caleb and I looked at each other and we thought, Either Jordy or Fraser, it, they're the ones those three voted for. Was there any talk mm. that you or Jordy may be the actual target? Or what was it? I mean, what was mm. that experience like? That that post there, there, look, yeah, post vote deliberation. There was there was no talk about it, but I did have this knot in my stomach. Mm. And at Tribal Council, and you'll notice this if you ever watch very closely for Shawnee's responses, she'll respond without responding. Mm -hmm. like a politician <laughs> like a true politician she will say a lot without saying anything right yeah. and i don't like to attract attention especially mm -hmm. in that setting you know and that's why i kind of sat back and just and there were there were you know bits and pieces that i said which didn't uh which didn't see the light of day but <laughs> there was no talk about it and in retrospect now you know it's obviously they those three knew very well that they had voted for me even if it was Geordie, it still would have been exactly the same play. Mm -hmm. Try and get Simon to burn his idol. And, yeah. uh, you know, and it wouldn't make it, it wouldn't help anything, but it would be out of the game. Yeah. And it would have been played. So, well, yeah. Yeah. Why? So why do they, do you think they landed on you and not Geordie? I think that Geordie may have been, and there's a lot of talk around this, which kind of gets a little bit old, boring, but Geordie being a more notable player, considering mm -hmm. his time in the game last season, is probably considered more threatening. Mm -hmm. That people see as a, an easier decision to vote out longer term. And I yeah. think George, knowing that he would, you know, he'd be probably copping some gunfire later in the game, wanted to keep a player like that around. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. which is probably an easier or more convincible strategy of voting Geordie instead of George. Hmm. Whereas if we were past tribe swap or past merge and here's happy old phrase, cooking rice and beans for everyone every day, lunch and dinner, not stirring the pot, not, you know, not stepping out of line, not being outrageous. I'm a safe player, you know, and I just kind of settle into the, uh, you know, into the fold. But I Hmm. think that, he probably thought Geordie could have been used as a shield down the track mm-hmm. and I was more so expendable mm-hmm. and I didn't aid his game. And look, the reality is he got me before I got him. <laughs> we were going to use each other for this vote and take out Simon, but the next vote, if I had survived, may have been different. <laughs> well, that's the name of the game, right? You know, get, get them before they get you. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'll well- be eaten. <laughs> Fraser, last question for you. Um, this is a sure. heroes versus villains season. You were on the villains tribe. Do you feel like that was the correct tribe for you? Why or why not? No, <laughs> but when Survivor <laughs> says we want you, you go. Let's mm-hmm. do it. You know. But look, seriously, you know, it, it, it's a lot of fun. I wanted to play into it. I, I, I wouldn't call myself a hero, but I definitely don't think that I am a true villain in nature, you know, like, and I hope that that does show through. And I hope I, you know, and I I don't think I did anything that I feel, uh, you know, consciously um, annoyed about or Mm -hmm. misrepresented me or, you know, my, you know, my personality. So I feel like I played really well in terms of integrity and sticking to my word and, and being humble and, and I'm happy with how I played. And whilst it was an early downfall, I made it through a pretty tough part of the game for our tribe. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the halfway point of our tribe as the villains, Mm -hmm. as far as we know it so far. So, you know, I I can leave head held head head held high knowing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Well, first, thank you so much for your time this morning. We wish you all the best. I think your elimination will be remembered for a a very long time. (laughs) So we hope to maybe see you back up there. (laughs) Absolutely. Awesome. Second chance season. Let's go. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you so much again. We appreciate it. and hope you have a good uh, rest of your day. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Be well. You too. Bye.